Hello, I am Akash. I shall be your trainer. And in this course, we would learn about the minimum safety requirements stipulated in OISD Standard 244 related to Design, Layout, Automation, Storage, Loading and Unloading Operation carried out in petroleum depots, terminals, and standalone crude oil storage terminals. Tank truck movement inside the premises poses a greater risk and can be a potential source of ignition. Hence, tank truck movement inside the installation should be kept to a minimum. Truck movement should be oriented to provide a one-way traffic pattern for entrance and exit. Hazardous areas are classified into three different zones. Zone 0, Zone 1 and Zone 2 based on an assessment of the frequency of the occurrence and duration of an explosive gas atmosphere. Let us now understand how to calculate the effective dike capacity of an existing dike with the help of an example and ensure that it meets the requirement of OISD 244. There is a dike with four diesel tanks of diameter 20 meters each. The safe filling capacity of each tank is 4712 kiloliters. A fire incident on one tank may have cascading effect and engulf neighboring tanks if the tanks are located close to each other. To minimize the risk of spread of fire, the layout of the storage terminal is made in such a way that separation distances between various facilities are maintained. Main features of tank manifolds are the number of inlet and outlet connections to the tank should be kept to the minimum required. All tank wagons and tank trucks should have a fill pipe extended up to the bottom to avoid splash filling. Single contingency is a scenario where one of the assets is under fire. While designing our firefighting system, we consider the single largest contingency for water and foam requirement and pumping rates. Cooling rate for the tank on fire is 3 litres per minute per square metre of the tank shell area. Cooling rate for all other tanks falling within the radius of the tank plus 30 meters from the center of the tank on fire and situated in the same dike is 3 liters per minute per square meter of the tank shell area. Let us learn about the important points while designing a fire hydrant network. The fire water network should be laid in closed loops as far as possible to ensure multidirectional flow in the system. This is done to ensure that water at the desired flow rate is available even if some sections are affected during the incident. In case of floating roof tanks, foam is poured into the foam dam to blanket the roof seal. The system should be designed to create a foam blanket on the burning surface in a reasonably short period. Let us look at the minimum foam application rate for primary protection. For cone roof tanks containing liquid hydrocarbons, the foam solution delivery rate should be at least 5 litres per minute per square metre of the liquid surface area of the tank to be protected. A petroleum terminal is constructed as per the best engineering practices to minimize risks as far as reasonably practical. However, during handling of hydrocarbons, the possibility of product leaking out of containment cannot be ruled out. 
If the leakage goes unnoticed for a long time, it can result into buildup of an explosive mixture which can cause a fire or explosion. The valves of the dye should normally remain in closed position. Process shutdown should initiate stopping of processes in a safe and controlled manner such as Stop loading pumps Close all ROSOVs and MOVs Bonding is the process by which two bodies or elements are connected using a conductor to maintain electrical continuity to prevent sparking. This metal bonding helps minimize accumulation of static charges or potential differences across piping flanges and between other non-conducting joints. Let us look at the IP rating table for the first digit. As the level increases, the protection against particles become more stringent. Every storage tank is designed for a critical height beyond which the tank would get overfilled, causing damages to the tank. It may result into overflow of the petroleum products and catastrophic damages in case of uncontrolled release of product.